live. Oh, I need to grab my phone. Hey, so chat. Hi. For hi. once, it was actually not a technical difficulty. It was just a Jen got distracted watching fucking YouTube shorts. Okay. Here we go. I should have charged my phone before right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, well. I'll plug it in if it starts to die or when we move to the couch later. Okay. And then... Um, okay. Hopefully, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can. Hello, muffin cake. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> so here's your fucking spoiler alert. I heard Does that work? And Maya. Okay. <laughs> Yay. All right. Maya. Sweet. We oh. are good to go. Hi, Apollo. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, husband. He was in the other room. <laughs> but united in internet. Yes. Oh, and then record. Oh, yeah. Camera's going to go away one. for a second. Don't freak out, okay. people. I won't freak out. No, main, uh, mainly stream does. They're like, oh, no, your camera's frozen. Oh. <laughs> Not this time. Not today. Do you have the okay. email? What? Do you no. Have email? <gasps> oh, no. I know. I haven't been drinking that much. And been drinking for the both of us last week, I guess. Apparently. Oh, my. Dude, I legit have not been that drunk since South Korea, 2012. And I did, that was legit also two glasses of wine. That is how lightweight I am. Um, my Scottish and Russian ancestors are disappointed in me. One bandwidth do us part. <laughs> do, what? <laughs> no, and we will not be parted by bandwidth. Yeah, oh, Apollo, yes, okay. I guess we were going to save that for the um, mid-break, but yes, everything on Patreon seems fine now. Like, okay. everyone is showing up fine. I added everyone's name back to the mid-break. Everyone is fine, I think. <laughs> so, I don't know what happened, but it seems totally back to normal. I have looked today. Yeah. I looked. I did... I did the responsible thing. I literally worked all day, mostly oh. at my like day job. And then after I logged off of that, rolled straight into finishing the script because <laughs> your girl's procrastinating everything. Well, to be fair, Monday and Tuesday, we went and checked out PSU. Yay! Hi, Maya. There we go. On our active list, Apollo is back. Mm -hmm. Yay. Everything is normal. Everything looks good. Also, I don't know who Mackenzie is, but that's a new top tier patron. Do you recognize that name? So they were on the list last month, but then like it also said fraud last month. So I don't know what was going on with that. I added them to the list. I don't know what name they prefer. So if, you know, at the mid-break. Yeah, we'll just we use first add. name. That's it's what I did, good. yeah. But because it says their full name on Patreon, and I don't want to like accidentally dox somebody. Yeah. Also, you know, if you don't tell us, I don't know. Oh, who is that from? Oh no, that's cyberpunk. Okay. Hmm. How do I sound? Don't I sound good? Like, yeah, do you have something new? Yeah, I worked with, I tweaked with a lot of different settings and did a lot of different, like, cleaning up of everything audio. Good, good. So, I sound back to a normal me. 
and audio clips still work and everything. I am happy with my settings finally. My head quit being a jerk. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. Okay. Maya. Mary, come lay in my lap. Okay. It's not two girls without cats in laps. He's laying in the window, which I don't blame him. It's a nice view. The sun is setting. We can see it because we're on the West Coast now. Yes. Something you don't think about growing up on the West Coast, moving to the East Coast. You're like, oh, yeah, I don't see the sun set over the horizon anymore. Like the ocean. I know we can't see it from here, but like, yeah. Okay. It was crazy. Where are you going to decide on being? Hello, this Daddy Bad Knight. Welcome to the chaos. We have not yet started, but we will be soon. Oh, hello. Hey, Cass. Okay. All right. Mm. I think we are officially ready. I'm legit excited about this, even though I've never played this game. I love this episode already. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then let's get into it, shall we? Oh, wait. Hold on. Something is still. Oh. Okay. All right. I think. Oh, oh since our title still says the patron chat. <laughs> so Daddy Pine said. I will. Yeah, because I was a little rushed. <laughs> get, like, she, get putting us live. She messaged me like two minutes before the half hour mark going like, oh no, I got distracted. <laughs> I'm coming right now. What'd you say? I'll be there ASAP. That was funny because I was just cleaning and I was like, I need to like turn my computer on. And then I looked at the time and it's like 726. Um, and I was like, shoot, she's probably waiting on me. And that's the one time you weren't. No, right? Okay. Eliminated from our Ghostbuster season. Oh no, I'm sorry your team lost. Oh. Okay. Uh, everything should be updated on our live stream now. That's a bummer. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. And no, I was not distracted by a video game or anything. I just got off of Mass Effect, had to delay their patron chat to this week. And then I went into the garage to decompress and then... Uh, like, got completely lost in YouTube shorts. <laughs> so it's, like, totally my own damn fault. Okay. Mm. Mm. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Two Girls, One Ship, the podcast where we analyze, rate, and review all that the world of video game romances has to offer. I'm Genesis, the girl who is not shocked at all with how many hours I have put into Baldur's Gate 3. I'm so jealous. I'm the, I'm the, oh my gosh, I'm Vervada, the girl who's so jealous. I have been watching Baldur's Gate 3, like, lore videos like good to know before you play or like the overview of the classes and the races that you can be because i have never played a Baldur's gate video game and i'm so excited i just have to wait a little bit more time to get it on ps5 but i can't wait i'm i'm so excited i um, i have missed like high fantasy rpgs you know haven't really had one since inquisition yeah it's been a minute, and I think that's why, it, like, I'm diving so head into this because I'm like, oh, this feels a need that I've had since, like, Witcher. I don't know. Yeah, but then it's Witcher. You didn't. You were Geral. I know you can do like the origins and play as one of the companions if you don't want to make your own character, which to me is like wild because I want to delve in like character creation is one of my most favorite things ever. Yeah. So, and I've never even. Aside from like the one group of friends I kind of played D and D with, 
but they just mainly wanted to hang out and do drugs. Um, I haven't really played D&D &D either, so it's going to be a whole new world. And can you answer one question for me, though? Because I wasn't sure. Like, your character isn't voiced, right? No, mm -hmm. you are not voiced. Well, okay, so it's kind of origin style where you have you, you can have you pick like a eh, huh, hi yeah voice, right? But then also like like remember how there was like party banter and yeah. stuff like that while you're walking around? You definitely have a walking around voice, just not a cutscene voice mm. or That's dialogue selection I voice. Find that out. I love having a voiced character. I do too, but it really does, it lends to the role play of it. That's like true. How, how would I say these words? But uh, instead of more Baldur's Gate, we should go yeah. back <laughs> even further, KOTOR style. <laughs> yes, we should. Uh, if you're new here, welcome to the beautiful chaos. But you should know that our podcast centers on character and romance analysis and doesn't shy away from exploring the fun of fucking. Or from the deep emotional connections built between two or more characters using specific in-game dialogue. So if you want to stay spoiler free, then this is definitely not a podcast or episode for you. So here's your fucking spoiler alert. Thanks for the spoiler alert, N7, even though you won't hear this because you are lost in Starfield right now. And just like with all of our previous episodes, we'll assume you have some background knowledge of the game and character in question, but we'll be providing context for those of you who may be unfamiliar. Today, we're once again going to a galaxy far, far away to a game that came out a long, long time ago. Tonight, we're discussing a romance that for many, many people was the first video game romance that really captured their hearts and imaginations. This character has been loved and lusted after for 20 years and still hits just as hard as ever. This episode is about none other than the renowned, maybe even feared, depending on how you ended your playthrough, Jedi, Bastila Shan in Bioware's 2003 space opera adventure, Knights of the Old Republic. You are easily the vainest, most arrogant man I have ever met. Besides, I know you can't be serious, since I was purposefully not staring in your direction. I am a Jedi, remember? I have far too much mental discipline to reveal what goes on inside my mind with such obvious physical clues. My thoughts remain hidden, including whatever my feelings are for you. I, I mean, whatever I feel... I mean, whatever I think about you. Okay, so if you don't know the voice actor, we will totally announce it. But those lines in specifically is where I hear her. Like, that's where I hear her. It's so Any good. I love it. As you heard, Bastila gets a bit flustered when it comes to Revan. It's adorable. She is a human Jedi who was born on the planet Talverain. Her mom, Helena, was not a nice lady, according to Bastila, and her dad was a treasure hunter, forced to go on dangerous hunts to try and pay for her mother's lifestyle. Her mother gave up Bastila when she was young because she felt that the constant travel was not suitable for a small child. Luckily for Bastila, she, found, she was found to have great force sensitivities and even had a rare ability called battle meditation very key which increased her allies morale while demoralizing her enemies very cool and apparently very rare when the jedi knights revan and malik rebelled against the jedi council bastila sided with the council and fought in the war against the mandalorians with the galactic republic how do you know she's a light-sided jedi She'll tell you, just like a vegan or a crossfitter, like all of the time. And after the final battle with the Mandalorians, Revan returned from the Unknown Regions as the new Sith Dark Lord Mahaha, with Malak as the apprentice, and they launched the latest model of Sith Empire. Bastila was aboard Revan's ship when Malak betrayed Revan and tried to kill him. We'll be using he, him pronouns for Revan tonight because in order to romance Bastila, you have to be the canon male Revan, even though Revan's kind of not actually canon. It's like a whole thing, but whatever. 
Yeah, the canon versus legends versus content that's versus. not considered either. Yeah, versus Disney versus LucasArts versus whatever. Revan's cool. Mm-hmm. Canon Revan is best to love husband, whatever. Well, canon is uh, Disney and yeah. legends, legends is uh, Lucas. All of it. Yeah. yeah, it's just a whole thing. It is. It's almost like they should make a podcast about the two differences. But (laughs) it's thanks to Bastila that Revan survived. She used the Force to stabilize the nearly fatally wounded Revan, and this created a Force bond between the two Jedi. Bastila and the Council decided the best plan to deal with Revan was the most unhinged one. Erase his memories and brainwash him! A.K.A. reprogram him to be a loyal Republic soldier. Not even a loyal Jedi. Just a little cog in the machine. <laughs> like Karth. The Council hoped that the bond between Bastila and Revan would allow them to discover the location of the Star Forge without having to deal with Revan being all Sithy. If you want an even more comprehensive breakdown of all things Star Wars, including a two-part episode on the player character and a separate episode on Bastille herself, please listen to the Holocron, Holocron Histories podcast. It's hosted by former guests Teacup and Ben of Tamaria. Yes, they do a much better job of like going over all of that than we do. They are the experts. Okay. So now to the events of the game. Yay! You're Revan. But you're whatever you've named your character that doesn't know he's Revan. And you're aboard the Endar Spire as it's being destroyed by Malak. Karth rescues you. You get out on an escape pod and get yet another concussion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We've explained that part last Kotar episode, right? So you've got to run around Coruscant. I mean, Terrace. They're like the same thing. And find Bastila. You find Bastila and head to Dantooine to see the Jedi Council. There must be something significant Bastila can do with her epic levels of space magic. And our boy Revan is clearly special too. He's a player character after all. Give us your orders, oh wise ones. Uh, sorry, listener. Uh, she meant to say Coruscant. It was going to bug me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I've only ever seen that written down. Yeah, it's Coruscant. Coruscant. See, I'm the reader. This is why I mispronounce everything. Give us your orders. You and she are linked, as is your fate to hers. Together, you two may be able to stop Darth Malak and the Sith. Well, do not let your head be filled with visions of glory and power. Such thoughts are the path to the dark side. The way of the light is long and difficult, as you must learn. Are you ready for such hardship? Ugh. Like the path of the light, please. It it bugs me. I don't know why, but just like the way that Jedi believe that they are holier than you, that they are better than you because they walk the path of the light. No, the path of the in between, the path of making my own decisions based on my fucking choices is way better. That is why I go sit. At least I have the freedom to choose who and what I want to be. Rage. Grr. Okay. (laughs) The game will constantly remind you that you and Bastila are linked. Kind of reminds you of another space magic wielding hot lady that is linked mentally to the player character. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Bastila walked so Liara could run up on the Shadow Broker. And just like with Liara, the game primes you for a romance with Bastila. And honestly, rewards you for it. But we'll get to that. We're busy getting trained as a Jedi Knight. Well, retrained, but Revan doesn't remember that yet. The Council also says, hey, you two, go find that Star Forge. The Force is telling us it's important. <laughs> yes, the Force. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Bastila keeps a close eye on Revan to make sure he doesn't, like, fall back to the dark side. She tries to take her role as Jedi mentor very seriously. Almost too seriously. 
She is often quite holier than thou about the Jedi and their role in society. And I tend to think it's because she has long been quite gray. She isn't totally light or totally dark. She's somewhere in between. But the galaxy is purely black or white when it comes to Jedi. So she tried to convince herself by repeatedly evangelizing about the Jedi teachings and beliefs, especially to Revan. There is belligerent sexual tension between the two of them. And if you ever call attention to the mutual attraction, at least earlier on in the game, she will adamantly deny it. It's super cute. Please, I'm a Jedi. Such feelings, such attractions are well, they're beneath me, quite frankly. I admit, I find you intriguing. I, I mean, I find your command of the Force intriguing, but my interest in you is purely academic. Surely you can understand why. Our fates are strongly connected. So connected that a literal bond has been forged between us. Yes. Keep on denying that attraction, Basta. See, we don't know it yet as the player, but Bastila knows exactly who Revan is. Bastila is with Revan specifically because she is keeping an eye on him for the Jedi Council. The concept of the Force Bond is not new. Is not new anymore. But it was back when this game came out. So if you go to the Wikipedia page on Force Bonds, it'll say that the first time it was mentioned was in the Voices episode of the Clone Wars show. However, this is literally a Force Bond. And Bastila has a point about the bond being a potential cause for their attraction. It allows the bonded Force users to sense each other's emotions and thoughts. And that can influence the other. In fact, Sith will use Force Bonds to mind control some people. So who's to say it just can't organically make a romance happen? Mm hmm Space magic aside, this is a wonderfully delicious trope called Faded Mates. You usually see Faded Mates stories in fantasies rather than sci-fi. Think uninspired human girls accidentally stumbling upon a fae prince or a werewolf in the forest and bam, the mate bond snaps into place. It's even more delicious when the people in the bond fight it, try to deny that attraction. It's usually done where an all-powerful character is rendered powerless to the bond, powerless to withstand its appeal and its destiny. Chef's kiss. That's Bastila. If you really think about this kind of romance, I think most people wouldn't like being forced together with someone, though, in real life. Like in Lucifer, when Chloe's mad about God literally creating her for him, for Lucifer. But in stories, it's nice. It's a nice and convenient trope to use, and when done well, is so swoon-worthy. So much sexual tension, because their bodies are recognizing the need to bone, yet mentally and emotionally, they maybe aren't there yet prime real estate for a slow burn romance, which is exactly what we see with Bastila. Eventually, Revan can speak his thoughts aloud and admit his feelings to Bastila, who is not quite ready to speak on the matter right when you bring it up, but she will eventually continue the conversation. You have been patient with me, haven't you? I suppose you deserve an answer, but you have to understand how difficult this is for me to say. With all my training, I should be able to control myself better than this. But you're not like anything I expected. You're not like any man I've ever met before. I find myself watching you when I don't mean to. I'm thinking about you when I don't want to. It isn't supposed to be like this. Aww. Astola and Raven sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Or more accurately, Raven is just quietly staring at Bastila while she has a neurotic crisis of faith and goes back and forth about how wrong it is to love, and yet she does. Bastila is overconfident in her abilities and the guiding force of the Jedi path. But like the random council dude said, it's a hard path to follow. It's not like metaphorically hard or only the diligent disciples can follow. It's literally impossible. They don't let you feel, and feeling, as Bastil will come to find out, actually strengthens the connection to the Force. Insert whole rage and rampage again. <laughs> but for right now, 
All she knows is that what she has been taught, which is feeling bad, logic good, Sith bad, Jedi good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, everything is always that simple. But like most people, Bastila is not one way or the other. She's not all light or all dark. And all of her problems stem from trying to fit into one of those molds. Here's the fascinating dynamic of Bastil and Revan. They are enemies to lovers. Pretty much my top favorite romance trope. The whole game as Revan, we're running around trying to stop the Sith and Bastil is right there with us, following the man that used to be her greatest enemy. She's seeing him now as capable of great compassion and heroic deeds And depending on your choices, maybe not even a hint of the dark side left. In contrast, as Bastila grows closer to the amnesiac former Dark Lord of the Sith, she's left more confused about her place in the Jedi Order and even her worth as a Jedi. As the game progresses, there are a few times where Bastila can act in a very un-Jedi way, slowly foreshadowing a potential fall to the dark side. The infallible Jedi, this living legend, is slowly tarnishing. At one point, she can use the Force to push Mission, your Twilight Companion, down onto the ground. She will use the Force Persuade to convince Mota the Hut for being a better, for a better swoop racing contract on Tatooine. If you fail to persuade him with speech checks, she will use force persuade on a number of other instances as well, despite telling Revan previously that the force should not be used for profit and personal gain. As Jedi, we should be above such things. These actions are in direct violation for all that she has preached as an apparent straight-edge Jedi Knight. Eventually, she will consider the bond and tell you how she really feels. But before we get to that, let's take a quick mid-break and listen to some sponsors of the show, hear some fun facts, and thank our patrons. All right, Cantina dance time. (laughs) um well jen hinted at the very first fun fact but i'm just gonna steal it um bastel is voiced by jennifer hail hail yeah (laughs) hi hail Uh, to the queen um duh she's like in everything to the point that as of 2022 she is the Guinness Book of World Records record holder for the most female video game voices. Is that just amazing? I mean, I cannot believe you met her. I hope I hope she's there next year. <laughs> I hope she's there next year. Yeah. It's me and the crew. Well, part of it. Some of us are missing. Like you. You're not here. And Claudia wasn't I'm there. Now. Yeah. Well, hopefully Claudia can go too, but I'm I will fight death to get there next year. Yes. Uh, and Navi, Navi should have been there in that picture. She was there, just not in the picture. Um, and so many others are missing. But anyways, sorry, sidetracked. It. Yes, hail to the queen. Now, another fun fact is that Bastila's mom, Helena, is voiced by Carolyn Seymour. Hmm. Y'all, that's Dr. Chalk was. So Shepard and Shakwas really do go back in history. And then Shep's mom is named Helen. Hmm. Bioware, do we have a trend here? Do you think someone's mom is really named Helen? And they just Maybe. like did that. Or Pretty Helena. Cool. Mm-hmm. Something. All right. Other fun little things to talk about in the middle of the show. Spotify is at 143 ratings, okay? As a child of the internet, or as a child of T9 texting, actually, uh, 143 is very, very special because it's one letter to say I, four letters to say love, 
three letters to say you. So 143 is I love you. And so while I love that for the podcast, I would also love for that number to be higher. But thank you so much. Yeah, 143. That's freaking awesome. I also did finally get the Spotify Patreon feature to freaking work together. So it does all have to be done online through the two websites. You can't use the PC app. You can't use anything like that. Patreon.com slash two girls, one ship. Then you link your profile to your Spotify profile, then Spotify.com, and then go on there and then make sure that both are syncing both ways. So yay, it works. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to cancel uh, my Patreonage to the girls for October because it already charged me for September. Oh no, thanks for <laughs> donating a dollar. Yes, <laughs> right. And of course, you can sign up for two for a, a dollar or more to help support these girls and link your features together and get everything all in one place if you are a Spotify user. Of course, we thank all of our patrons at those higher level tiers, including Apollo and Toasty, Becky and Bat Knight, Miss Theos and Muffney Cake, Winifer, and a newest patron. Hopefully, it's working and this is what you wanted to do. Mackenzie, welcome to the club. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Big hearts, thank you major so love. Much. Yeah, we talked about it before we started recording, but like whatever was going on with Patreon is fixed. Everyone is appearing as they should, as far as I know. So everything's good now. But thank you so much for your patience <laughs> and also your support. I, I just like went back to the script. I'm like, oh, it's me. It's my turn. <laughs> okay, Jen. Let's get back to that sweet, sweet confession of love. Personally, I'm beyond ready for Bastila to finally admit her true feelings and for them to just bang already. Can they just bang already? Okay, okay we'll bang. I can't deny that there are parts of you I'm drawn to. Your power, your will. You are so much stronger than I am. In some ways, you make me feel weak, like I'm caught up in the wake of our destiny. But at the same time, you make me feel stronger, more alive. I realize now these feelings are part of the bond we share. The Jedi Council surely realized this. They knew my loyalty to the doctrines of our order would be tested on this mission. By facing and overcoming my feelings for you, I've learned a valuable lesson about control and the dangers of emotion. This is an important step in understanding the Force. I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear, but I felt that it was important you know how infatuation was nothing more than a result of our powerful bond hmm it's not mm. exactly how i imagined that going i find it interesting that she says these feelings are the result of the bond you can hear that and think oh the bond between the two of them is giving them the illusion of love an artificial infatuation just purely from the mental link what I think she means is the bond with Revan, the former Dark Lord of the Sith, has created these very Sithy feelings in her. She doesn't say, I love it when you defeat a crate dragon and find my dad's long lost holocron for me. She says, I am drawn to your power, your will. You will make me feel stronger and alive. You know who values raw power? The Sith. Their whole organizational structure is essentially whoever can kill the top dog and defend that spot is the new top dog. I think she's trying to convince herself these very un-Jedi-like feelings are a result of an unintended but very real bond with what was once the top Sith dog. Yeah, to me it sounded like there, there was sex in her voice, like that was really good. And then it also had this little bit of like, I'm feeling submissive to you and I don't know how I feel about it yet. I, I, I mean, it's got to be because 
you know, like that's the amazingness that is Jennifer Hale's acting. But like, I, I felt that it was yummy. Now, whatever the cause of her feelings, Bastila does have an attraction to Revan. I wouldn't call it love just yet, but we'll get there. To further the romance, you have to choose one of two dialogue options. Although you can also choose to not continue the romance and agree with her decision. So to romance her, you must say either, you know I'm right, Bastila, or you don't always have to be strong, Bastila. Give in just this once. After she replies with yet another flustered, but it's against the rules line, you must either say, shut up and kiss me, you babbling fool, or I love you, Bastila, and I know you love me. Now, some dialogue variations can occur, and a Bastila may end up being the one saying, shut up and kiss me, but either way, it's an option for one of them. Mm -hmm. These dialogue options, I think, would hit a lot stronger if they were from a voiced player character. Just me personally. With them just written and not spoken, they can sound a bit harsh and clunky. Like, I think they might be trying to go once again for the sassy banter of Han Solo and Leia. But it doesn't hit as hard when only one person is speaking and the one who's speaking is like panicking a bit on top of it. It feels a bit like Revan's the high school jock in the dugout pressuring his new girlfriend to give it up like Fast Times at Richmond High style. It's not that dire, but like it can feel a little bit like that because he's kind of having to convince her or it's just a product of the times. Like the game came out in 2003, but it also could just be like trying to calm her down because she is kind of panicking. But of course, once you've chosen whichever dialogue option to further the romance, you do get a kiss. And she immediately regrets it. We shouldn't have done that. It was wrong. The Jedi are not allowed to fall in love. It was, it was a moment of weakness when I kissed you. We shouldn't have. I'm sorry. No, I know we both wanted it, but we shouldn't have given in to our desire. We're Jedi. We can't act like this. Not now. Not where we still have to deal with Malak. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't blame you, but it was a mistake. I have to get out of here before somebody sees us together. I'm going to leave the last two seconds of that. <clears throat> sorry. I had to leave the last two seconds of that clip in there because you can literally hear her running away from you. And that's just comedy to me. Like, it cracked me up. Okay. So, technically, I have a scene to break down here. I mean... I feel like you haven't had one in forever. I know. <laughs> what, what is like, going literally. on with this show? Where is my sexy sex? <laughs> Soon. Yeah. Okay. In this scene... They are practicing social distancing 20 years too early. They are literally so far apart on the screen that the camera angle has to switch back and forth in order to, for you to see the two characters. <laughs> so far apart. It's hilarious. Now, after you say the shut up and kiss me line, or whoever says it in your playthrough, it fades to black. While you two are still standing so far apart. It then comes back from the fade to the line that we just played. And they are still standing in the exact same position. So standing super far apart. Shut up and kiss me. They run together to kiss really quick for two seconds. And then split back apart and go right back to where they were standing. Yay. <laughs> Okay, that was that was it. But at least they reference it. They let us know that a kiss did happen. It is something. We didn't get any kissy kissy with with Karth, so at least we do here. Now this is a tough spot for Bastila to be in. On one hand, duh, this is 
Darth fucking Revan. But she can't concede with the apparent true servant of the light side, the compassionate protagonist. Is that who he really is? Or did the Jedi's reprogramming of his mind completely change him? Who is it exactly that she is falling in love with? Of course she ran away, because she can't answer these questions yet. But this doubt leaves room in her heart. And for her will, there's some darkness to further creep in. The love itself is a problem, too. Jedi can't fall in love. What would happen if he were to fall to the dark side again? Could she bring herself to stop him? And what would happen once he found out who he truly is? So many juicy, wonderful, glorious questions for this crisis of character. And she doesn't get much time to ponder them because she and the rest of the party get abducted by Darth Malak's ship, the Leviathan, and tortured by Saul, calls personal hell, aka mortal enemy. Remember Karth? Yeah, I forgot him already. Just kidding. <laughs> I do remember Karth, um, but compared to Bastila, what is Karth? So they are trying to find out where the Jedi Council are holed up at, but of course, Revan doesn't spill. Revan's will is so strong, he brought himself back to life once. Of course, that happens after the events of this game, and none of that is canon anyway. Revan is a badass and deserves his own Disney Plus show, but I digress. It's during the subsequent escape from Darth Malak that Revan's true identity is finally revealed to his companions, and Bastila is taken captive after some epic lightsaber dueling. It is this moment that heralds her fall. The others escape. But Bastila is tortured for a week by Malik. The next time you see her, she is his newest apprentice. She's fully fallen to the dark side and has a new goth girl outfit to really drive that fact home. Revan, Juhani, and Jolie engage her in another epic lightsaber battle. And eventually, Bastila concedes the fight and says that Revan should be the new Dark Lord of the Sith, clearly stronger than Malak. She says she will be his apprentice and lover, and I will be utterly yours, Master, and I will never seek to replace you. It's very interesting that she says this, because it is a very un-Sith-like the Sith's entire order rests on ideals of the strong replacing the weak. If apprentices stop challenging masters, the whole thing falls apart. I mean, what do they even do? <laughs> We're going to talk about the canon end ending of this game, the light side ending. So at this crossroads, we will be walking the path of the Jedi and not taking up her offer of sexy Sith lover. Back aboard the Starforge, Darth Malak orders Bastila to kill Revan to prove that she is wholly devoted to him and the way of the Sith. She agrees, saying she will not fail him again. Oh, but she will. Sometimes it's okay to fail when the test is stupid. When Revan and Bastila meet aboard the Starforge in the final confrontation, Revan must fight and defeat her three times, each time trying to convince her to return to the light side. I found that interesting that you had to fight her three times. Because it's like in Korea, you have to refuse something three times before you can accept. Otherwise, you're looked at as rude. And like three is just a very important number around the whole world. So I don't even know if that's like a reason why they picked that. Um, same thing with like when you're converting to Judaism, you have to ask three times before they know you're serious. Anyway, I digress again. When Bastila finally realizes that she cannot defeat Revan, even with all the power of the Star Forge bolstering her abilities, she asks him to kill her quickly, end her shame with dignity. Revan, in my preferred ending and the canon ending, once again pleads with her to return to the light. Bastila believes that she isn't strong enough to be a Jedi, that she is filled with too much anger, hate, and fear. 
She won't ever find peace in the forest again. Revan confessed his love for her, and she finally believed him. She finally let herself really connect with her love for him as well, and was willing to try and redeem herself. You were brave, and some would say foolish. But you were also right. The dark side has not wholly consumed me. I cannot raise my blade against you. You will go on to defeat Malak, of this I have little doubt. You will have gone from being the Sith Lord himself to the savior of our galaxy. And you said you loved me. This may not be the best time to say it, but I love you too, with all my heart. Aww. After this, Revan says, you're not afraid to love anymore. She replies, after this, nothing could make me feel safer than to be loved by you. That's a powerful line. Because being safe is so integral to being loved and to loving somebody in return. Oh. Thoughts, V? I like, I like that because I feel like we didn't even really talk about, which we can get into soon, but like her whole life, she was basically rejected in love aside from her dad and that was so long ago when she saw him and then after she was given to the Jedi they tried to train and meditate her feeling out of her because they convinced her that to feel is to be weak and she must resist because that is the dark side otherwise and then the one time she feels like seen and safe is in this force bonded person's mind that is supposed to be her enemy and i think i've heard this story before is it ray and kylo ren i mean this came first but like true star wars fashion they borrow aka straight up retell the same story over and over again but it's because it's good like this is a good story i love this I wish we got this on the big screen rather than Raylo. I know a lot of people love that, but I don't know. I like this. I like it too. Now, oh. with her newfound confidence in herself and her love for Revan, she promptly turned the tide of the battle in the Republic's favor by whipping out her battle meditation. Revan goes on to defeat Malak. The Star Forge is destroyed. And then we get the quintessential Star Wars ending of a medal ceremony with a Wookiee yelling, I'm not doing a Wookiee impression, no matter if you put it in the script, honey. I I don't know if, like, I, I know there are people who can do it, but it's not me. It's um, not me. The, it's not me. The closest I can do is, like, oh. <laughs> I can do a kitty mouse. Yeah, kitty mouse. I can do that. I can roll my tongue, but I can't do whatever a Wookiee does. Okay, so, um, and that's the end of the first game, but not the end of Revan and Bastila's love story. In the canon ending, the two get married and settle on Coruscant. Coruscant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm scared to say it this time. Oh, they settle on Coruscant. They don't get along with the Jedi Council anymore, though, because the Council kind of forbids marriage and love. But these are two truly powerful Jedi. They are on the gray side now. They walk in between the dark and the light, strengthened by both, but commanded by none. As Jolie Bendo says, love doesn't lead to the dark side. Passion can lead to rage and fear, but passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. That love itself will save you, not condemn you. Yes. Yes. Okay, Jolie, I like you. And I really do like this line. If the Jedi followed this, I might be able to follow their path a little bit better. But I agree. I, that's why I love Basil and Revan the most, I think, is because they are in the middle. 
Another story doesn't end. Although their story doesn't necessarily end happy either. I guess it's kind of mid, considering how most love stories in this faraway galaxy end. Bastila gets her ego prego, and then Revan had to go off into the unknown to find something, something dark side. And then the true Sith captured him. But like Solus in Dragon Age Inquisition to a romanced Lavellan, Revan will keep an eye on Bastila through the Force Bond in their dreams. Ooh, forever apart, it's still in my mind. The end. Just kidding. <laughs> this, lovely listeners, is where we would normally end our show. But tonight, we have an extremely special guest. Long time listener, first time caller, also happens to be married to my wife. Uh, it's Benny. <laughs> We're a happily polygamous, uh, polygamous, polyamorous. Jeez, I, I did that again. <laughs> polyamorous Pacific Northwest couple. Let's move. I'm going to move to the couch. Hold on. I'm going to mute so I don't like annoy everyone with the ASMR of shuffling a microphone around. <laughs> I need to open up Spotify and look at the last time that I legit had a sex scene to break down because that would actually be really funny to find out when was the last time we I had wanna, a good bang. I want to find that out too because it really feels like a long time ago. Karth, no. Tropes, no. Bad romance, n well, okay. So, yes, I got to break down a lot of sex scenes in that chat, in that special episode, but none of them were good. Witcher 2, okay, a little bit with the Triss episode, because there was a decent scene to break down in the Triss episode. But that was released July 15th, so that's still been, oh my god. All of it. Like, nothing in August. <laughs> um, before that, Bayek and Aya did not have actual on-screen sex. Patron chat. Life is Strange didn't have any. Last of Us didn't really have anything. No, they had kisses. Nope. Sex Education with KB. Sorry for the delay. Oh, Garrus, what episode? Oh, what is this? Part three of the Citadel DLC. Mm. Okay, give me a second. I have to unplug my headphones so you can actually hear you. Oh. Oh, does that mean that we're, you're going to hear me over the microphone then? Oh my god, legit sex scenes still left in them. Uh, we have Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, Andromeda. I don't know about the Persona games. I know that there's a lot of heavy romance content in Persona, but not if there's actually any sexy sex. Trying to calm down by playing mobile fighting game. <laughs> Baldur's Gate has major sex scenes in it. Major sex scenes of all. I was going to ask when do you want to do Baldur's Gate because I it, I know that one's good. Uh, I think like all of 2024 is going to have to be Baldur's Gate. There's so much complexity to it. Okay. Um, yeah, we have Persona 4, Days Gone. What's that one? And then we start... It's the Pacific Northwest zombie motorcycle riding game that my husband loves so much. It does Why? have a, a determined, like a predetermined romance in it that's interesting and I wanted to analyze. Okay. Um, let's see what else. 
going through and then Inquisition all has actual sex scenes. All hail Lord Dragon. That sounds familiar. And then we start 2024, which we have not scheduled out at all. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. Can we do two high fantasies, one right after the other, though? Because we'll be ending with Inquisition. Well, we normally start the year with Mass Effect, and then we end the year with Dragon Age. So I'm hoping, I mean, we could do Andromeda at the beginning of 24. What's going on over there? Well, the problem is I can't figure out how he can hear it. Because if I just unplug my headset, it doesn't come out of my mic because or my speakers because it's all for my mic. And he was listening on Twitch, but it's like really delayed. So I'm like, maybe I should just give you my oh. headset or we, I don't know. Like, I'm not really sure. I should have planned this out more, maybe. <laughs> like, tested it or something somehow. I'm not okay. really sure. Other than, like, you joining our Google Meets with your laptop, that's the only thing I could think of doing. Get your laptop. Sorry, everybody. I swear we are technologically advanced creatures. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even have to use a separate microphone or anything like that as long no. as he's in the call he's, and, like, has his own headphones. He has, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna Don't set let it me up cry. I think we have it on the list. Episodes to schedule for 2024. Witcher 3. Boyfriend Dungeon. Detroit Become Human. KOTOR 2. Dream Daddy. Hades. Andromeda. And then probably starting the massiveness that is. Oh, and then Starfield's on the list. And then... Uh, Yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be very, very interesting because there's um, multiple ways that each romance can go. And then, like, I was so used to, like, the standard romance format for romances. You know, like, you have your, your the first time you meet the the character, the first time you flirt with them. The second time you get like, okay, I'd really like to date you. Then you get a lock-in choice. And then it's pretty much you flirt for the rest of the game until the end of the game culmination scripts, uh, culmination scene. That's not how BG3 works at all. That is amazing. You get so many different opportunities to like have conversations about romantic experiences. You have multiple sex scenes throughout the game. You can bang a couple different people and then decide to break up with them and then continue playing the game and romance somebody else. It is so good. So much awesome. Two girls, one technical difficulty. I'm just going to keep talking. All right, AMA chat, go. Uh, yes, Bat Knight, you have already been put on uh, the list for the demo Devil May Cry episode. Um, it's not going to happen until mid-2024, so you've got a minute, honey, don't worry. <laughs> um, tough choices, I have to break up with somebody. Uh, if you want to bang multiple people, yes. Digitally violent, yes. Hello. Jesus. Oh, you got <laughs> you to update your thing. <laughs> what? It's not going through your posture for reason. What? Oh. Change it off your mic and put it on your AirPods. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, well, you are 
Oh, because you guys are sitting next to each other. I was like, how are you in two rooms as one? I mean, I want to romance as many possible, but breaking up. So, no, it's not actually that difficult. I want to get something. Shit. Just so <laughs> mute. Andrew. No, don't, you don't even have to go into the bedroom. If all you need is just yeah, to be able to on, hear me talking. It, trying to lower it, the volume. Hey, V, just mute his microphone and have him sit next to you and use your microphone. So run what basically everything through your computer except for That's the audio through his ears. You're smart. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> okay. We're ready. I muted your mic, so just talk into my mic. Okay, I'm so sorry, everybody. We we don't know what's happening. What? <laughs> oh well I'm, he's getting more beer is what's happening. Oh, okay. More beer is good. <laughs> yeah. I mean I want more wine, but it's fine. I can wait. Nope. Yeah. It's down. It's I mean, also, oh, I I'm still waiting for my wine to get here, Benny. What's going on with that? This hand is empty. I'm supposed to deliver her wine, too. Oh. Okay. Here, I'll position that. All right. Feel free to ask him stuff. <laughs> okay. Hello, oh. everybody. <laughs> Am I supposed Hello. to ask him stuff? Yes, it's Mr. V. Oh. It's, okay. This Mr. is your v, guest. Nicknamed Benny. Tell us your well at, first of all you were supposed to introduce yourself and your pronouns that you like for the interwebs and uh, tell us your kotor origin story all right good evening everybody i am benny i use he him pronouns i absolutely love kotor this game came out in what 2003 when i was graduating high school and Bastila was my first love outside of Topanga Lawrence from what was that Boy Meets World? Yes. So this this was my very first game that took me away from just the very stereotypical boy games of playing nothing but Madden or 2K or FIFA. And so this game allowed me to develop a character, made me think of critical decisions, uh, falling for the love of the Star Wars before Disney kind of ruined a few things with Adam Driver. Um, so then you get to see really great things such as, well, just everything. I'm sorry, I lost my notepad. I was looking for it. <laughs> he took notes. Did. Where did you put it? I don't know. I love that. Shit. It's probably oh, wherever you were watching. Oh, is it underneath the laptop? Yeah, I found it. It's actually underneath my laptop. No, I put all the British names so I could remember everybody. I mm. struggle and too many years of uh, instructing. I had to see and read just a smidgen or I won't understand any of it. Yeah, I know. Uh, but no, I've. I absolutely fell in love with all of it. I enjoyed the big suspense of not knowing that you were Revan at the very beginning, uh, that you were just some cog or some, I think, a Republic uh, soldier. And you got to go in between picking what type of class of a person you wanted to be, whether you wanted to be a, uh, I want to say a scoundrel, a soldier, or there was uh, one other class that I can't remember off the top of my head. And character development can't not stop talking about that, especially for something in 2003 that I had never seen before, which may not mean a whole lot. But well, no, I, I mean, played I any of the other games. I fully agree. Like the level of your own personal character growth in something like this was re seems really, really new for back in 03. Like I had definitely uh, played a lot of games where there was character growth and development but are in a pre-planned story not necessarily anything where i got to make the choices in how my character was being developed 
And granted, I didn't play KOTOR back in the day, but watching these videos now, I'm like, these are things that we've seen progress in other video games, but I feel like this is the earliest version of this that we got to see. It was almost like our free world, our open world, before open world really became. And I mean, just the difference between KOTAR 1 and KOTAR 2, just the graphics alone were amazing. But that's not what we're here. Yeah, do you remember if you romanced Vasila the first playthrough, or did you only play through once and you for sure romanced her? Like... So I played through three times, and in those three times... I have to be a good guy. Every game I've ever played, I've always been a good guy, whether it's been Kotar 1 or 2, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2, all of them. I've always had to be a good guy, make the be the hero. And so I definitely romance Bastila every time because I can't like differ from that. Because she is... A, I thought she was amazing. Um, Jennifer Hell, who I did not know at the time, and uh, was a wonderful voice actress. I do agree with what some of the things you guys say of um, some of the lines being very clunky. Uh, definitely not as good when you're reading them. Maybe that's just through the 2023 eyes and not the 2003 eyes. I'm like trying to adjust the mic, make sure it's good. Oh, wait. But, Gotta love yeah. being deaf. You never know how loud you're ever yeah. talking. No, talking you about. are talking at a great level, and everything you're saying is really clear, but it's almost like you need to move your headphones a little bit further away from the microphone because I can almost hear oh. myself through his headphones to the microphone. It's muted. I don't know how it's doing. No, it's muted. no. Oh. It's, it like he, I can hear me coming out of his headphones oh. into your microphone. Are your AirPods up really high? I'm deaf. Oh yeah. He, he's yeah. Kind of no, deaf. no, no. It's totally fine. Oh. <laughs> um, but so Hashtag. if he could just sit a little bit further away from the microphone, oh, that's yeah. all it needs. Yeah, I can sit away. further away. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we talked a lot about Vasila. Did you hear or learn anything new about her? Uh, so some of the things I did learn, I never really knew her backstory as well. Uh, so learning that, um, I think I remember her dad was a treasure hunter. Uh, I think I remember that she had a bad relationship with her mom. You got your pirates game out. <laughs> I'm sorry. He just has his phone. He has this little pirates game. He and plays. Like, so right now, the biggest thing, <laughs> I was multitasking. <laughs> I brought up my notes. I have about a small page. Uh, so one of the big things I did learn was I really feel like their relationship between like the four spawns and how uh, Bastila keeps questioning her feelings for him, for Revan. Um, it reminded me a lot of the Geralt and uh, Yennefer uh, storyline of uh, what was it, a gin that they. Mm -hmm. uh, so it really reminded me, which if I'm not mistaken, that book came out in 1993. So maybe some stealing of some storylines. So the whole Yennefer and uh, Geralt uh, Jin stuff, the original book came out in 93, but it wasn't converted from Polish to English until much, much later. And then on top of that, the actual Geralt and Yennefer portion of them getting together wasn't until like the third or fourth book. So, but two thousand and three. You don't um, like Yennefer? We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. I love Yennefer. I mean, I I like Triss. Okay, now. Okay, go on about. Um, sorry. I think yeah. one of the other <laughs> things I noticed was that I kind of feel like Bastila was a little bit jealous of Revan and Malik. At this point in time, if we can think of the galactic world, I don't, I don't have a good word for that. Uh, Republic. The Republic had been at war for several, for all of their life. So they roughly started a war around four thousand. What is that? Before Yavin, whatever the. Oh, uh, like three thousand nine hundred and forty-two or something. Like if almost four thousand years yeah. before that battle. So, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, Revan was born in like three nine nine six or something like that. And so they've been at war their entire life and the Jedi are not meant to be, they're more peacekeepers. They are humanitarians. They do. They're not really war fighters in the grand scheme. If you would go off what was old canon, now legend based information, which I have a lot of strong opinions on. So I have a sneaking suspicion that when she, as a Jedi Knight, seeing two other Jedi Knights in the form of Malak and Revan re rebel against her, the council and stand up against them to try to, I think originally to defend the, uh, the Republic that they were trying to avoid fighting the Mandalorians. And I think she was a little bit just jealous, maybe. Uh, maybe she admired them for their bravery, for trying to go for what was right. And ultimately, in that battle that Revan and Malik took their little forces off, they went into the deep space or whatever the proper terms are. Uh, the Where the Reapers realm. live. <laughs> Where the Reapers live. <laughs> And they found the Star Forge, and they obviously came back a year or so later, not so nice people. But I always felt like with you know everyday life, human competition, they she may have been just mildly jealous, maybe admired that they stood up for what was right, since you know many people were dying at the hands of the Mandalorians that they were trying to take over a new uh, space, new worlds. That was something I found out about Revan that I thought was super cool. It's only because I didn't really know anything about him until researching for this episode in particular because it's like more canon, you know, rather than Karth. But like his mask is a Mandalorian mask that he took and he was like, oh, I won't take it off until I stop the Mandalorians. And like, that's his look that he got so i thought that was a cool bit of lore but um yeah i don't know like i don't know if, i don't know if she was jealous is more of like she i think she admired them but also up until the point where maybe they served as a cautionary tale if anything because like revan and malik were especially revan was supposed to be like the best jedi and then they even got taken to the dark side and so back then when she was like oh no but the light side, but then when she was a kid too, Bastila was like, I won't become a stuffy know-it-all like the Jedi Council. But then she kind of does go that way a little bit. Also, interesting fact, Revan's like 10 years older than Bastila too. So like he was already a full-grown adult when she was still a baby Padawan, like learning stuff. You know? Hmm. What are you doing? I made sure I didn't I was afraid my computer would Oh. <laughs> I think maybe jealous was not the correct word. I a level I of admiration. They, maybe yeah, because you see that they were the best up and coming stars of the you know Jedi community. That they end up falling to the dark side. I still hate the way the game portrays like who Jahani and Bastila fall to the dark side. I think that it's not to make light of what I'm about to say, but I think it's like depression and depression. You can have down songs that some people can say that you are depressed, vice is a clinical diagnosis. When Malik and Revan came back, they were truly set in the fact that they were wanting to do their own agenda, whereas Jahani mistaking an accident and going into a uh, like a cave or whatever it was and dwelling on her thoughts thinking she's bad when she was just misguided isn't her falling to the dark side. Yeah, like Basila gets tortured for a week and basically forced to be like, okay, okay, I'm Sith. Like, and then everyone's like, oh no, she was always weak willed. Of course, she. all the things were there. Of course, she would fall to the dark side. It's like, wouldn't anyone, if they were tortured for a week by jawless wonder? Like, seriously. Yeah. 
No, I fully agree with that. And that, and I don't really like the term falling to the dark side. No, it's a path that you choose to walk on. You didn't <laughs> fall there. You decided Queen. to go down that route. Yeah. I would also say that a fun fact for other noted gray Jedis is Gai Quan Jin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, the gray Jedi Liam path Mason? is... That's Liam Mason. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I, only, I haven't seen those ones since I was a kid, so... And he was empowered by none other than his master, who was... Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, that was his no. apprentice. Oh, shit. <laughs> who was his master? Uh, Count Dooku. Oh, yeah. yeah, and he became a Sith Lord, right? And then guess who? Who's yes. his master? That was Revan's apprentice. No, it was right? Yoda. Oh, shit. Yo, I don't know Star Wars, apparently. <laughs> There's so much shit to know. How are you supposed to know? Oh, okay. Anyway, back to Bastila. Sorry. No, it's yeah. okay. We This is literally our whole thing. <laughs> Do you feel like we did this romance justice? Yes. I think you kind of have to be go with the canon side because if you don't go with the non-canon side i think you can kill her run her off i mean you can run karth off which is mm -hmm. a positive <laughs> but uh, oh. yeah i think we only like karth because he's voiced by kaden like yes. Raphael sparge please tell me you remember who kaden is so i had a friend that played the game with me at the same time and Kotor, he right? was more Yes, he played Kotar with me around 2003 at the same time when that was still a thing. And we may have traded the disc, I don't know, or remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, he hated Karth. And so when they got to the planet with the Star Forge, he actually decided just to be as ugly as he could be to make him run off because he thought it was a funnier death <laughs> that he would be stranded on this deserted planet, essentially. Because I think you can make him run off on the beach scene. Yep. Yeah. Yes, you can. And yes, it's funny, but it's also like, ugh, well, poor Karth, you were just trying to be a good boy and doing the right thing. He has... He has the highest light side rating out of anyone in the party. I don't care. No, I'm he just, is isn't that a crazy? a wish version of... No, he's a wish oh, version. Oh, he's a wish not version. Not make a wish, wish <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh I still my god. Hate him. Oh, okay, wait. So, do you think that there was anything about this romance that you would change or have made it better in some way? If there would have been a male voice actor or a female voice actor, I think that would empower your actions a lot better. Like I, voice? I completely agree with um I completely agree with your guys' opinion that you can, when as reading it, you can voice it in your head a lot more. But I also sometimes with like uh, Inquisition, when you have the two or three voices for each, uh, the the male or the masculine, feminine visions, versions. Sorry, I can hear my own self on a delay, and sometimes <laughs> it really throws me off. I'm starting okay. to be really critical of what I say. It's okay. Yeah, I kind of wish. I kind of wish every RPG had a voice just because that makes me role play better. I don't care if it's not my voice. Like I like having a voice, but so I agree with that. <laughs> I don't want to hear my voice. I want to hear somebody else has a uh, commanding <laughs> voice. Yeah. And especially when it comes to other lines, um, like, so when we talked about it, like the ones that you can say, like, uh, where are they in the script? Oh, you must say either shut up and kiss me, you babbling fool. That line can go so many different ways. Like, shut up and kiss me, you babbling yeah. fool. In comparison to shut up and kiss me, you babbling fool. You know, it's like two yeah. very different ways to interpret that. Go ahead and take care of the child. Quit say words out loud. Sorry. No, she's she's fine now. She was just coming. I, we didn't want her to come. But if I had to see this one more I'm time. sorry. <laughs> I was like trying. She was like about to do it and then be like, no. And like teasing. And I'm like, do it. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I guess the last, do you have any final thoughts on Bastila? 
Uh, hands down, one of my favorite romances. I think she's up there with Cassandra from Mass, or not just not Mass Effect, but Dragon, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, Inquisition, who is one of my favorite romances and uh, video game romances. Um, she's been one of my favorite, I think, female Jedi characters because I think Kotar 2 had a lot of bad female Jedis that are just betrayal. So she's been one of my favorite Star Wars female Jedis outside of Felicity Jones' character in Rogue One. Mm, she's no, she not wasn't. a Jedi, though. She's not a Jedi, but still one of my favorite female characters in the... Uh... Well, like, for female Jedi, other than Basila, you have Ahsoka Tano yep. and Rey. Yep. And is there anyone else? I don't think there is. Like, not a well, major Leia, character. Leia or Leia is... is it, She's a force user, but she doesn't walk the path of a Jedi. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. There are a ton of unnamed female Jedi. Like, we see them all the time. I need more. I know. Oh, she's, she's been down as one of my most favorite characters that I've played video games in the last, what, 20 years or so. And I would like to think that kind of stands out. She popped your RPG game cherry and video game romance cherry? Yes. All right. My only other question is, who are your Dragon Age romances? <laughs> Cassandra. What about like Origins, Origins and Dio? Oh. oh, I only played Inquisition. All right. Uh, do you have Mass Effect romances? So in which was the Mass Effect, the one where you go in outer, like way outer space? That's Andromeda. I Andromeda. I was a whore. <laughs> I slept with everybody in the same playthrough. Appreciate you like, get an achievement for that. It's called the hat trick. <laughs> so double points for being a soccer pun. So yeah, I that's how I played that one. Did I? I'm trying to think of who you could romance from. Uh, Describe them. I'll tell you. In which <laughs> game? Yeah, which which one? I played, what was it, Mass Effect 2 the most. Yeah. You romanced Miranda. I romanced uh, Tally was my favorite, and mm -hmm. I have her little statue on mm -hmm. her little nerd wall. Yeah. And Tally was my favorite so far. She would be probably my if I had my Mount Rushmore of uh, female characters, it would probably be Bastila, Tali, the, um, <laughs> Cassandra. Cassandra. Can't even remember and Scout name. Harding. Lace Harding. It's both. Scout Place. Scout yeah. Yeah, I know. Because no, I just like her name's Lace. Loved her because you could flirt with her all the time. She was witty. She Who's never gave voice? it up. No, she didn't. Who's her voice actress again? Somebody important. I don't remember. She's like the person you could never get. Right, you can't romance her. Uh, but it is also like 9 o'clock. Yeah, it is. Oh, Allie Hillis. Oh, that's a Liara. Also Liara. Yeah, that, that's what I, I was like. I remember somebody. Somebody big in another game. Wow. Yeah. Do you got any plugs? Got any shout outs? Well, before we end the show, the, what was the version of it that I sent to you in Discord? Oh, okay. You sent me. Yeah, Be before but... we wrap up the show, is there anything that you want to shout out or plug besides your wife? LOL, 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 LOL. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have, I mean, I have social media, I don't do anything on it. I'm still in my rot phase. <laughs> like two people will laugh at that and know what that means. It's post Navy rot phase. And you deserve a break after everything you have been through. After 14 years. I can't wait to play Starfield. Like hopefully maybe this weekend. And yeah. I can actually get through it. Or start it at least. I'm not trying to get through anything. He's All on right. a Discord too. Yes. For for y'all. <laughs> All right. I 
think it's a good spot for uh good night apollo uh it is a good spot for us to wrap it up for the night then and if you like what you are hearing please be sure to leave a review on itunes or on spotify and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts you can now find me on the cyberpunk lorecast with my co-host toasty where we explore the foundations of the past the state of night city today and the news of the future for all things cyberpunk And of course, in our Two Girls, One Ship channel on the Robots Radio Discord. And come give us a follow on all the social medias and on patreon.com slash two girls, one ship. Our theme music was composed by the ever-talented Pipe Man Studios. And our artwork was designed by the esteemed Let's Not. Links to all of those are in the description. I'm on the Robots Radio Discord as well, and our own Two Girls, One Ship Discord server where we nerd out on all our favorite CGI significant others. Be sure to check out our live streams on Twitch on Fridays at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Our podcast episodes release on Mondays because you need at least one good thing on a Monday. So thanks for listening, and remember... Good luck, my love, and may the force be with you. Beauty is in the eye of the controller. eh? I love love that line. I had to have it in there. It's a good one. I think I might even cut that one down a little bit farther and just keep it as, and may the force be with you. Yes. Also, does your inner Catholic, does your inner Catholic, does your inner Catholic want to go and also with you? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) May the peace be with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also with you. Yeah. And also with you. I was reading up on the... You're reading up on... Oh, the chat. <laughs> he was yeah. like, I swear I, I wasn't playing my chat. pirate game. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I wanted to see who said We've been what? married a while, you can tell. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's adorable. I love you guys. Uh, oh, man, my eyes are burning. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> it's not even late here. It's I was like, no, it's nine o'clock. You are Whatever. not tired. We got Oh, you got a...